So this is a tier list for competitive play. Um, it bleeds over a little bit into casuals and ranked and whatnot, but this is kind of made from esports competitive experience, but also targeted mostly towards that. Once again, it kind of bleeds over into casuals and ranked anyways, like most of the stuff that, that applies in in competitive play also applies to casuals and ranked. Um, so yeah, that's that's the foundation. And then on top of that, we have the various tiers. Uh, obviously we have SS, oh we do actually have S+. I, I told Bonka the wrong thing. So SS, S+, S, yada yada yada. So the general idea is that if something is SS tier, it's so broken it has to be banned every single game. It cannot go through the banning phase. Uh, at its worst, in C tier, that means it should never be picked. You will never see it played, or you should never see it played. You should never pick it. You should just never have it in your game. Those are the two extremes of the spectrum. And then anything in between is just, I mean, it's a tier list. You guys, you guys know the idea. The only things I'd like to point out are like, we have B and B plus and A and A plus. So like B for instance might be that the champion can be played um, in very specific circumstances, aka like pocket strats, um, just just very 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 specific reasons. Whereas B plus would be that it's it's a good pick when when it is good to be picked, then it works pretty well. So any any character where you might you're not probably not going to be picking it every game. You're probably not going to see it very often, but when it is picked, it tends to do very well. So in the past, for instance, Kness has always been B plus tier, where or kind kind of B plus to A tier, where it's like she's not played that often, and you're not going to see her every game, that's for sure. But when you do pick it, like when you have a good situation to pick it, she tends to do very well. So that's kind of the idea between the tiers. Some of them, like it is just a straight up tier list, but it is also just they have definitions basically. Um, thanks for the sub, by the way, Jacob Bray. I appreciate it. So yeah, obviously since uh, Genos is new in OB55, I'm not going to be covering Genos. Uh, I never I never cover the newest champions, so Genos, not part of the tier list. Uh, but yeah, starting with Androxus. I would say Androxus is a B plus tier. He is not a particularly good pick right now. He suffers a lot from range, he suffers a lot from the fact that people aren't used to playing him in the way that he needs to be played now. Like a big thing with the legendary nerfs or the le legendary changes is that he can no, use, no longer use Dark Soccer, which in itself is a bad thing. But the big thing is that when you use God Slayer, it actually interacts differently between your dashes. If I'm playing with Dark Soccer and I dash, then I just start falling down and then I can dash again and I start falling down. But with God Slayer or with Heads of Roll, when you dash, you actually dash and then you hover in the air. Because it counts as using one ability, when you're playing with God Slayer or when you're playing with Heads of Roll, it counts as one ability, right? It's one ability with three dashes. But with Dark Stalker, it counts each dash as a separate ability. So it doesn't have that interaction between the dashes that, ha that God Slayer and Heads of Roll has. So now that it's changed, you always have this kind of constant hovering, which is something that's actually surprisingly hard to get used to. So it's... He, he has potential to go a bit higher up, maybe once people start getting used to it. But for now, it's like he has no range, so he has no poke damage. And he has to get so close to people. Like he has to get in your face if he wants to do any damage at all. And that's a huge issue, especially now that tanks actually have range. Like a Fernando, for instance. Like previously, Androxus could probably fire a Fernando pretty well. But now that Fernando actually has good range and a lot of damage, you have to stay so far away from the Fernando if you want to not take damage that you end up not doing any damage because of the fall off. So because of the tank ranges and because of the general like poke team comps that you have, Andro becomes really bad. Like it's not even it's not even funny how bad he is. That being said, he still has some situations where he can be good. Like when you need high ground, if you're playing on Serpent Serpent Beach for instance, and you need high ground, then Androxus can potentially be pretty good. But other than that, honestly, he's just not he's just not good, man. Ash, I'd say Ash is I don't know why Ash is over there. What, what are you doing over here, dude? You're supposed to be you're supposed to be here. You know what? Whatever. Whatever. 
Ash is A plus tier. I'm not sure why she's chilling all the way over here, but whatever. Um, she honestly, she's pretty good. Like the meta kind of is revolving around these aggressive tanks that have a lot of range. They can poke. They can force. They can get forced into the backline basically and just push, push, push always. Compared to uh, again, like say Androxus, who can't really push without taking a lot of damage. Ash can just go in like whatever. I I take I take damage and that's okay. I'm just going to shoot you and you can't really run because I have infinite range basically. So Ash is a solid A plus tier. Um, she's honestly, she's just a, a solid overall pick. Eric is also A plus tier. He, sim similar idea I guess, or it's a, it's a little bit different. Like Ash and Barrack have two different core mentalities I guess, but now with the Barrack tinkering buff and change I guess, he actually has more, more of a similar playstyle to Ash where you just kind of go in the back line or you fi find some weird angle and you just stand there and you're just like okay I'm a tank I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna shoot you and there's really nothing you can do about it you have to put in so much teamwork in order to actually deal with that and it's sim very similar with the Ash right you go in you you pick your spot and you say this is my area now if you want to fight me come fight me otherwise you're gonna have to run away because I do a lot of damage and it takes so much coordination for a team to actually deal with that. Obviously, if we're talking like solo queue casual play, it might be a bit more difficult to pull that off. Because you're much, like if you're playing Barrack, you're much more reliant on just like having a healer or having someone to follow you up. Because it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to get solo kills. But he, sta he still can get that. He can just set up somewhere. Especially if you get healing station or uh, extra barricade uh, duration or something. You can kind of just set up anywhere and you can say to any of the carries, come fight me, I will 1v1 you, because he has enough damage. He's practically a carry at this point with Tinkering. So I'd say A, a plus tier, he should be picked pretty early on in a draft and he probably will be picked early on in the draft. Um, just an overall good tank pick, or quote unquote, quote unquote tank pick, aka carry. Bomb King I'd say is A tier, he's just a all around okay pick right now. Uh, obviously he lost a lot of mobility, but that doesn't mean he can't be played. He's still perfectly fine. He's not... Uh, I guess he's not OP like he was, but he is still a good pick. Especially if you get if you get the Grumpy Bomb, uh, the new Accelerant card, it's actually really, really annoying to deal with, especially if you're playing like a tank like Ash or something that can't just... I guess Ash has some CC immunity, but if you're playing Ruckus, right? It's like you have to use your dashes to get away from it, and you have to be so quick to get away or you're fucked. So he's he can be good. Chain Reaction is also good with all these tanks. Um, he's one of the best characters at dealing with shields, which means, again, with a kind of tanky meta or a bruisery meta, he's going to be pretty good. So overall, he's just a solid pick. The main reason he's not higher up is just because he lacks that ability now. Like, he lacks the ability to to get up on certain walls, certain places. He lacks the ability to get in and out of fights super quickly. He's just more of a like typical carry now. He's much more like a Shaolin or a Cassie, right? Where, well, I guess Cassie has the ability, but he's much more like a Shaolin or a Victor, I guess, where you're just kind of standing there doing a fuck ton of damage and you force them to deal with you. That's kind of what Bomb King is now. Buck fits in the same area as Androxus, where he can potentially be played. Um, honestly, there there might be arguments for Buck being better than Androxus, despite the nerfs. A lot of people have been saying that Buck is just dead now, and there's no no way to pick it. But honestly speaking, like he has potential, he has high ground potential, he has burst potential. He does kind of fit with the meta in in some senses. Where sure, it's a kind of tanky meta, but every tank comp is still going to have at least one carry, and they're still going to have at least one healer. And Buck is extremely well at dealing with those, so. If you leave Buck alone for too long, then he can catch you off guard. Like, it's there, there's no reason he can't do what he, what he did before. Sure, he can't jump in and out of fights all the time, but he can still jump in and fuck shit, fuck shit up, you know? He can still get in the back line, find a carry, find a healer or something, and basically one-shot them. Especially with the net damage, or even with the jump damage. Like, he does do a lot of damage. Um, so yeah, I'd say he's B plus tier. Uh, you, don't need to be, you don't need to have a pocket strap to pull him out. He's just not going to be picked very often, but I do I do think he can do well uh, when when he is picked. Cassie, uh, Cassie, Cassie is too strong right now. She does too much damage. She has too much mobility. 
she it's it's insane like after playing scrims after playing playing competitively cassie is always the issue like there's all when you try to analyze a game especially a game that went bad if you lose a game whether it be 4-0 3-4 whatever if you lose a game you say man what went wrong there and legit if they have a cassie almost every time it comes down to we did not deal with the cassie like we did not deal with the cassie well enough she was rolling around and we couldn't deal with her it is so obnoxious playing against the cassie right now where she can just roll 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 all the time it's extremely hard to hit it, to miss a shot at this point especially when you have all these tanks you know when you have barracks when you have ashes when you have ruckus it's extremely hard to actually miss them you can constantly roll around the fight you go from your main and you hit two shots and suddenly you're in their main you're on one side of the map and it takes two or three shots and suddenly you're on the complete other side of the map and in the meanwhile you still did 2k damage you know it's actually insane how how strong she is right now and again in this kind of tanky brawler meta it's so important having poke damage where you don't have any fall off and you have consistently high damage and since she got the projectile speed buff it's just it's so hard to miss miss your shots honestly especially on these slightly smaller maps like frog isle like you always have a place you can stand and shoot someone basically so she she's just ridiculously strong now she has too much damage and she's she has literally she has she's probably the most mobile target in the game right now if she can hit her shots a good cassie player is the most mobile character in the game right now which is kind of insane for how much damage and how little fall off she has we've discussed it in the past where a character can have a lot of things but a character cannot have all the things and right now cassie has all the things she has mobility she has poke she has no fall off so she has range she has cc she has cc immunity she has vision on all her targets she has extremely high ult ult game percentage like she's just got everything so in that sense cassie is s plus tier drogos i think drogos fits in in the a plus pretty well uh he he can be picked at any time throughout a game and he will do okay it can be hard if the enemy team has like a Leon and a Cassie. It can be really obnoxious playing Drogos, but especially on most on most maps you have ways to avoid it. And he has two perfectly viable builds right now with combustible and worm jets. Uh, both are perfectly fine options. Even with the worm jets nerf, it's still honestly it's still perfectly fine. You still have decent mobility, and you can still play it in a very similar way to how you did before. You might not be able to go quite as fast but honestly it's it's fine like he he serves his purpose and then he still has his ult which is crucial it's still a a in theory at least a free team fight win so drogus is still a plus tier he still has a shit ton of damage he still has mobility um it's just he does suffer against certain characters he will get shit on by a leon he will get shit on by a cassie uh so he's a good pick overall and you can pick him whenever but not good enough where you need to pick him early on you don't even need to pick him at all but would recommend Eevee Eevee's just not good man um, it's there's no real reason to pick Eevee right now she doesn't really serve any purpose in a team comp like previously she served the purpose of causing a lot of commotion but now there's just no real reason to. Like you have characters that can do the same thing. I mean, you have all these tanks that literally do Eevee's job. It's like, wh why would you pick Eevee instead of Fernando? Eevee can't survive as long as Fernando. Eevee does not do as much damage as Fernando with the fireball. Eevee does not have the, have, well, okay, Eevee has more mobility than Fernando, but Fernando can still keep up with an Eevee if you run the right build. She does not have, or, she does not have as much sustain as Fernando. She, she just has nothing that a character like Fernando doesn't have. Even like Ash, honestly. Ash has the same potential that Eevee does. Like all these tanks can do the same thing that Eevee's always been so good at, of buying time. Like way back in the day, talking like a year ago, Eevee was so good because she had burst damage. She could blink in and basically one-shot someone. As they, as we've gone on though she's lost that ability and she's become more and more and more this flanker that can survive all the time she can survive she can survive she can survive well she does a decent amount of damage but now we're, mo we're moving away from the damage and we're getting more survivability 
it's like why would you pick a a essentially a tank of Eevee where you have all the survivability and sustain which is what a tank is supposed to do you have sustain you have survivability and you're a bully it's the same thing a tank does except now the tanks are actually good now the tanks are actually even better than Eevee at that but why would you bother picking Eevee ever it's just a risk picking Eevee is just like Sure, you can go in and you can survive and you can do some damage, but you're also going to die. A coordinated team is going to kill you immediately. It's such a risk. Because if you die that one time, you're going to lose the game off of it. Whereas with Fernando, with Ash, with Barrack, that's not going to happen. It's so much harder to make a misplay. So in that sense, like, Eevee is just not good. Like, there's just no reason to pick her. Anyways, moving on. Fernando... Fernando would be the other S plus uh, tier character. He is ridiculous. Honestly, he's probably the closest we've ever been to SS tier. Um, he is basically ban worthy every game. If you're not first pick, you kind of have to ban him. He buys so much time. He does so much damage. He can do literally whatever he wants. He controls the whole game. Every time he is in the game, he will control the game. Everything comes down to the Fernando. Can you deal with the Fernando? If you cannot deal with the Fernando, you will lose the game. How you choose to deal with the Fernando, that can vary. You can choose to try to ignore him. You can try to, to get wreckers and deal with him really quick. But at the end of the day, you're spending so much time trying to deal with this fucking Fernando. And you finally get him after 30 seconds and you've lost the fight. He buys too much time. He has too much control over the game. He just, he just sets the pace for the whole game, you know? He can play it however he wants, and that's how the game will be played. So he, he's just... It, it's too much damage, too much mobility, too much survivability, too much tank, like core tankiness with, with his HP pool and his shield HP. Like, again, he is the closest to SS tier we have ever been. I think there are still ways to deal with him. Um, a good team... Like, if, if you're a bad team, you're not going to beat a good team just because you have Fernando. But you're going to be a hell of a lot closer, at least. So, he's just he's just all around a good pick. I probably would say, just ban him every game. Like, if you're not first pick, just ban him every game. Because that's how strong he is right now. Grok, I'd say Grok is actually A tier. Um, he's moved up quite a bit. Nothing in particular has changed on Grok. It's just, again, we have this tanky bruiser meta where... You just go in and you just stand there and you fight. You know, that's what Barrack excels at. That's what Ash excels at. That's what Fernando excels at. All these tanks just go in and they stand in your face and they just shoot you. And you have to figure out a way to deal with them. And Grok's honestly very similar to that. He goes into your face, he right clicks you so you're slowed, and then he stands there and shoots you. If you try to deal with him, he totems. If you kill the totem, he ghost walks. If he ghost walks, he gets his totem back up. It's just, it's, he can buy a shit ton of time, and especially if you played correctly with a proper team comp. If you play, if you put the Grok with a Fernando, you have the strongest combo in the fucking game, you know? It's just so hard to deal with that. And it's, it's not, it's not because anything's changed. It's not because of QG at DreamHack or anything. It's just, he fits the meta. He brawls and brawls and brawls, and then when worse comes to worse, he pops a totem or pops his ult and keeps everybody alive. It's like it's almost like a Grover ult, right? You can use your your abilities if used correctly with shields and stuff. You can use it correctly to to reset your whole team, basically. That being said, if you do mess up, then you mess up real bad. If you take one misstep and you get hooked, or if Drogos gets a loogie and hits your totem then suddenly you can't do anything for a very long time. He does have very long cooldowns, and if you mess them up, then you're going to be in a real, really bad spot. So it takes a lot of teamwork and takes a lot of coordination, but like especially for, for casual games and ranked, it might be quite difficult. But if you, if you mess up your cooldowns, then all you're really doing is just shoulder peeking with your right click until your cooldowns are back up again. It's very similar to Reprieve Eevee back in the day, where it's like, Sure, you can do a lot, but if you mess up your ice block, or if you're forced to use your ice block really early on in the fight, you're not doing anything until it's back off cooldown again. And that's kind of the same with Grok. If you mess up your totem, and it dies immediately, 
then you're just running. Or sometimes you not you might not even be able to run. Sometimes you're just going to be chased down by a Fernando, by a Barrick. And so he's he's a good overall pick. You can pick him at any time. And he does actually fit the meta pretty well because we have this we have this brawly brawly style team comps which Grok is not only very good against but also very good with. So he's he's an overall good pick. It does take a lot of a lot of teamwork to pull him off properly and it can go it can like shit can hit the fan really quick with him but overall good pick and you can kind of pick him at any time so that's the nice thing with him grover i want to put grover in like a tier but i don't think it's justified right now he can do a lot of damage he has he's very annoying to deal with um but at the end of the day it's like you can't just pick a grover and put him like in any team comp you can't pick a grover and play him on any map like you just you have to be careful where you pick him and why you're picking him because like sure he does a lot of damage sure he has a cripple sure he has a heal but if you don't have poke advantage then you're not really doing anything with it like you can say oh well grover actually out snipes Kinesa now and you just like you're playing on frozen guard right and grover's just standing there throwing axes but it's like every time he throws an axe it's just getting healed up again like every single time you throw an axe it's just getting healed and healed and healed unless you have a very specific team comp that can follow up on your damage then we then we can start talking. Then Grover suddenly okay, well maybe he's viable. But again, then you're kind of building a team comp around it. You're you're having very specific ideas surrounding the Grover, not necessarily a pocket pick, but the Grover has to fit in with the comp with the map fairly well. Otherwise, he doesn't become particularly useful. Uh, Inara, I think Inara honestly is B plus tier too. Um, she's probably on the verge of being A tier, but she is the weaker. She is the weaker version of the tanks right now, in that, yes, she has the anti cauterist yes, she has the cripple, yes, she can do a lot, but she will get punished. She has zero mobility, and she has a hard time getting out of team fights. So yes, you can go, you can run up with Inara, and you can go, like, in their face, you know, on all five of them, and put a cripple, and yes, you could potentially wipe the whole team off of that, but... If you make one mistake, then suddenly it doesn't work anymore. Or if the other team goes, yeah, we know they have an Inara. We're not going to, we're not going to stand here. We're not going to get crippled. We're just going to kill you when you come in. It's like it's so, it's so easy to deal with her because she has no mobility. So, like she has all this potential, but it's so hard to pull off without actually getting punished for it. Like the other team at least in competitive play, should be smart enough to deal with it. If we're talking casual to ranked, maybe slightly better, because then you don't have the coordination to deal with Inara. Just like Fernando in casuals is really broken, because you don't have the coordination to deal with the Fernando, you know? But in competitive play, it is easy to deal with, because once she goes in, she cannot get out again. So you could stand on point, and you could say, okay, well, I'm Inara, I stand on point, I, I don't get cauterized, uh, I can just stand here forever. But that doesn't really benefit the team. In in a meta that's so brawly and wants to get in your face and just push you down slowly, Inara doesn't really fit. Because she doesn't have the mobility. She doesn't have the push potential. She goes in, and she's in. She can't leave again. She can't go in and out of fights. She's just all in or standing on point. That's her, that's her two options. And standing on point is not really a viable option unless you have comeback mechanic. And... Going all in isn't really an option because it's so dependent on your team working the team fight to perfection. So B plus tier, she can be picked, she can be played, but she's a liability. Kinesa I think is A tier. Um, previously we put her like A B plus tier, kind of in between. Um, she's always suffered the issues of not being able to to be played on every map and not being able to be able to play with every comp but flankers are kind of dead like i'm not gonna lie i mean you just look at what we have so far we have andro buck and evie three characters that have been some of the strongest characters in the past and have absolutely decimate kinesa and they're all kind of meh so it makes kinesa pretty strong Yes, there are still tanks that can deal with her. Yeah, it's really, really annoying to deal with a Fernando as a Knessa, but that's why you have your team for. And she's not going to be able to play, be played on every single map, right? You're not going to go on Jaguar Falls and pull out a Knessa, you know? But 
you are likely to see a Kinesa on Frozen Guard. You are likely to see a Kinesa on Frog Isle. You are likely to see a Kinesa potentially even on, on Serpent Beach. Like, she has potential because well, you're not playing against flankers. You're not playing against these vertically mobile characters. So any map that has any amount of verticality or long, long line of sights, she is going to do well on. So yes, there are flankers that can deal with her in Fernando, in Barrack, in Ash, in whatever. But she can farm ult so quick because it's, it is hard to get to her as a tank. And she can really fuck up the tanks. Like, if she's just standing and shooting a Ruckus or an Inara or a Barrack, she's going to get ult so quick and then she just one-shots them, you know? Like, a Barrack can actually get pretty much one-shot by Knessa. So, she had, she does definitely has potential, um, especially if you pick up a mor morale boost early. Then, she, you're going to be seeing a lot of her own, like, Frog Isle and stuff, I believe. I think Lex is also A tier. Lex is arguably B plus tier, where he's good on on specific maps like Jaguar Falls and whatnot. But I think even though we might not see a lot of him, he is still good a good character. It's it's kind of weird because he I don't think he's going to be played that much because he's not needed that much. You know you don't you don't need to pick the Lex. You have you can pick tanks. You can pick uh, Cassie and characters like Cassie with more mobility and more like pure damage output because Lex still has the fall off issue and he still still does have to be kind of close but he is still good a good pick he is good against tanks he is good against against some of these carries like Shaolin like Cassie like he can still duel them so he is a good pick but he doesn't really like he, he fits the meta but I still don't think we're going to see a lot of him just because you don't have to pick him there are other picks available in most situations but that doesn't necessarily make him bad you know I wouldn't put I wouldn't put him C tier just because you're, he's never going to get played he is still good a good character even though we're probably not going to see much of him he still has a shit ton of damage and if he gets in your face especially if you're playing a tank he is one of the best tank killers like he has an ult that absolutely destroys tanks uh, he has he has potential to get like 1.2k headshots so he is, he is a good pick against tanks, and he can 1v1 certain carries that are relevant right now. So he's just he's just kind of a liability sometimes on certain maps. If you if you need range, then you're not going to be able to pick him. So yes, you could play him on Jaguar Falls. Yes, you could potentially play him on like Frog Isle and stuff. Um, he's just kind of this awkward place where he is a good pick, but you're not going to be seeing him that much. Leon, I put Leon in S tier, so. In, in casual games, and in ranked games, I think Leon is the best character in the game. Um, but in competitive play, she's really not. Like, she has she has damage, and the, the thing with Leon is that her skill cap is so incredibly low. She has, like, legitimately the lowest skill cap, or the lowest, yeah, the lowest skill cap in the game, where it takes so little to be able to play her well. You do not have to be good at the game to be able to play her well. But, if you play her well, you don't do that much more than someone that doesn't play her well, you know? Like, if if you see random Pussy Slayer 420XX play Leon, he's gonna do pretty good, because it's Leon. But you see Mutistina, who has really, really good aim, He's gonna do good, but honestly speaking, not that much better than that guy. Like it's that's that's the thing. It's like the difference from a really shitty player playing Leon and Mutustina, Perdo, whoever playing Leon is not that big compared to say a Cassie, right? Random Pussy Slayer XX is like not that great on Cassie. He misses a lot of shots. He doesn't hit all his roll shots. A Perdo hits every roll shot. And that makes such a difference, right? Random Pussy Slayer XX, he's like a B-tier Cassie. When he plays Cassie, he makes Cassie look like B-tier. Because you miss your first roll shot and then you're dead. Every time, right? You roll in, you miss your roll shot, you're dead. Or you roll in, you hit your roll shot, you roll again, you miss your roll shot, you're dead. But that doesn't happen to Muchasina, that doesn't happen to Pero, that doesn't happen to Sheepa, you know? Like, it's... The skill gap is so small on Leon that 
Yes, she's really strong in casuals. Yes, she's really strong because all these shitty players can play her so well. But it also means that the players that can play other characters really well don't actually gain that much from playing Lian. Yes, she's still very strong and she can deal with certain characters really well. She does a sh shit ton of damage very easily. But at the end of the day, it's like she doesn't really do that. Like she doesn't do it as much as a Cassie. Like a good Cassie will outduel a good Lian. Because that's just the nature of her damage. That's how her damage works. Is that it's meant to be easy. It's meant to be satisfying to to kill people as Lian, to shoot people as Lian. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's good. So she has a lot of damage, she has a lot of mobility, she has a lot of everything, honestly. It's very similar to Cassie, where she has just everything. She has everything she could ever want in her kit. But if a good player picks her up, then it's not that much different from your random casual player. So it's it's interesting because she is like again SS tier if if we're talking casuals or or rank play, but once you get into competitive play where it's important to properly utilize your good players, like I would rather have Peridot on Cassie than I would on Leon because Peridot being good at the game makes such a huge difference on Cassie. If he can hit every single shot, he will be a god Cassie. If he can hit every shot on Leon, it doesn't really do that much. Because everybody can hit their shot on, on Leon. Everybody can do damage on Leon. But everybody can't do what Peridot can do. Everyone can't do what what Dosups can do on Cassie. But everyone can do what they can do on Leon, basically. So that's why she's S tier. She is a good pick, but she doesn't she doesn't excel in competitive play. She's just a, a good overall pick, you know? And you probably do want to pick her early. If one team get, gets Cassie, you're probably going to see the other team picking Leon. And you will see a lot of teams probably ban out Leon because, again, it is so easy to do well. Right? Cassie can make a mistake, and that will cost her her life. Leon can't really make those mistakes. It's much harder. But she also won't do as well if she doesn't make any mistakes. Yeah. That's, that's my thoughts on Leon specifically. Um, again, in casuals and in ranked games, you are going to get absolute Ebola from playing against Leon. It is so annoying to deal with, and it's so good. But I would rather have Perdo, or I'd rather have Doseps, I'd rather have these good players play on Cassie than I would on Leon. So yeah. Maeve. Maeve is shit. Um... She's still shit. She has this really cheesy thing where she can press F and then basically one-shot something. But that's not going to happen because Maeve is shit. Makoa. Makoa is S tier. He's uh yeah, what up, Riv? Thanks for the uh thanks for the sub. Way to interrupt my uh my beautiful tier list here. But yeah, Makoa, honestly, he's S tier. Um, he's still really good, and we, we've talked about this kind of aggressive tank play style where you're going in and you're just kind of getting in their face and you're going to stand there. And Makoa is like really, really good at that, right? Not because he, can, he has a lot of sustain, not because he has a lot of survivability, even though he kind of does with his ultimate, especially. But he walks up to an area, just like Ash does, just like Beric does, and he says, This is my area, because if you step even close to me, I'm going to hook you and you are going to die. And it's it's honestly, it's it's even though Makoa has gotten some nerfs, and even though Makoa has almost he's been close to falling out of this S tier, he always comes back because he's always he's always just that presence on the map, you know? He just forces you to think differently about how you're playing. Like, you the enemy team has a Makoa and suddenly you're going, fuck man, I gotta play this differently now. If you're playing Cassie against Makoa, you don't go, alright, I'm gonna roll around until I die. You go, alright, I'm gonna, oh, I'm hooked. You know, you have, it forces you to think differently about how you're going to play. I think it forces you to, to actually think before you act. Because if you make that misstep, before you think about it, you're gonna get hooked and you're gonna die. Especially in competitive play, where a hook equals a kill. You know, 99% of the time, against a carry, a hook should equal a kill unless we're talking like Torvald Shield or potentially a Saris Heal early game, you know? 
So in that sense, Makoa just controls an area, and it, similarly to Four, it's just like he's a force to be reckoned with because once he gets in an area, then you have to play so differently around that area. Sometimes you might not even even be able to contest that at all. And then on top of that, when he decides to, he just goes, "All right, I'm going all in. Like I'm going to force you to move away because you're going to spend all your damage on me, and then I'm going to pop my ult, and then you still have to run." So it's like he he's just He's an area control champion, and it's it's insane how much pressure he can actually have, even without doing anything, you know? A Makoa can just stand there, and it forces you to play differently. It could be a horrible Makoa player, and it just forces you to play differently, every single time, because you know that if you fuck it up, and he hooks you, you are dead. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how good the Makoa is. If you get hooked, you're gonna die. So... Even without doing anything, Makoa is just really strong, and thats it's really hard to put him anything lower than S-tier. Pip, uh, Pip is kind of this, again, like, B-plus tier of... He can be played... Uh, he can be played, and he can be played well. Uh, he has some potential with Mega Potion, I guess, but... It's... It's the same thing as always, you know? He's still a jack-of-all-trades. He can do a little bit of everything, he just doesn't excel at anything. Like, why would you pick Pip? Like, oh. when when you're looking at the draft and you say, this is what we need, very rarely do you, do you say, that we need a Pip. Because you say, we need a Blaster. Okay, so you get Drogo, so you get Bomb King. Um, you get... You, you say, oh, we need something with a lot of survivability. You don't say we need Pip, you say, okay, well let's get an Ash or a Barrack. You say, oh, we need a healer. Well, you don't get a, you don't get a Pip, you get a Snake. You get a Ceres, you get a Ying, you get a fucking uh, Janos now. You know, there's never a time when you want to pick Pip. Sure, he can do a lot of things, but he's there's never a reason to draft him, you know? I, I can't see a, a valid reason to draft him, unless you specifically think, we need something, we need a character right here to draft that can do a little bit of everything. You know? That very rarely is that a situation that actually comes up where you say, we need a character now that can do a little bit of everything. Because you don't need that. That's not how you build a team comp. You say, we need a tank, we need a healer, we need a damage carry, we need a ranged damage carry, we need a flanker, we need this, we need that. You never say, we need a little bit of everything. It's, it's, he's just available. He's always there to be picked, and you might even see him in a few games. But it's just, it's so hard to fit him into a draft properly. So in that sense, B, B plus tier, it's, it's, I can't put him any higher than that. Ruckus, I think, is A tier. Ruckus, for a long time, has been really strong. Um, he is a tank killer. He can shred tanks. Um, and he can, he can shred carries too. He can, he has mobility. He has, he's, he's a pretty, pretty good pick overall. The issue is that... He soaks too much damage. In this meta, you have Drogos, who can fuck a Ruckus. You have Bomb King, who can fuck a Ruckus. You have Fernando, who can now fuck a Ruckus. You have Cassie, who shits on Ruckus. You have Leon, who outpokes Ruckus. You have Makoa, who can hook Ruckus. You have Ash, who can straight up brawl with the Ruckus and then just dash out. So you have all these good picks that just kind of shit on Ruckus. So yes, he's good against tanks. Yes, he can. if Makoa ults you when you're playing Ruckus, you can just shred him. But at the end of the day, it's like you have all these picks that are so good against Ruckus. You're going to be going... like when you pick a Ruckus, you almost every time end up playing against a team comp that is good against Ruckus. You know, you might see a team comp that's like Fernando, Leon, Barrick, Drogos, and a healer. Okay, what are you going to kill? What are you going to do on Ruckus? What you're going to do is you're going to stand there on the open trying to shoot people, and you're going to take all that poke damage. Because they're just going to stand there and shoot you until you're dead. And sure, when you're when you're on the first point, maybe... Like, maybe you can get a kill. Maybe you can dash up in the air, and you you get a nice get some nice damage off once the Fernando Shield is down. You can jump in, you can, you can brawl with them a little bit. And then they get cauterized. On the second point. Then what? Now suddenly you can do that, but you don't take any damage, or you don't, you don't, or you take all the damage, you know? Now suddenly you can't get healed anymore. Now suddenly you're just this guy that's standing there taking damage. 
you are essentially a Fernando shield now. You know? It's like, why would you pick Ruckus when a Fernando shield does the same thing that a Ruckus does? It soaks all the damage. A barricade soaks all the damage. An Inara wall, or even an Inara, soaks damage better than a Ruckus does. So why would you pick Ruckus? I mean, he's still an option because he still can shred tanks, you know? You get one good opportunity, and he can still do really well. And I probably would consider picking Ruckus before I consider picking Inara. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, if you if you make one little misstep, then you're gonna get hooked or you're gonna get blown up by a Bomb King, right? A Bomb King running chain reaction, he puts three bombs on you and you're dead. Especially with a Cauterize. So, he's, he soaks a lot of damage and he can pull a lot of aggro away from your carries, which is great. But, he's just kind of a shield, you know? You can get a good ult off, you can maybe jump up and be a little bit sneaky. You still have some mobility, so there is still potential there. But, if you make these missteps, you may make these little mistakes, you don't position yourself perfectly, you're gonna run into trouble very quickly. Ceres, I think, is A plus tier. Like, honestly... I'm not sure if she deserves to be A-plus tier. It's it's always hard with the he healers, you know? Like, it's it's hard to place the healers on a spectrum uh, when they're kind of their own category. Because at the end of the day, it's like, you need a healer. You're gonna have to pick a healer. So if the other team, if they ban, let's say they ban Genos, and then they pick Snake, it's like, you're, you're gonna have to pick a healer no matter what. So you're gonna have to pick Ceres. And if you're going to pick Sarah, like, does she deserve to be A+, plus? I mean, it's like, sure, I guess. Like, she's not as good as Snake, but she's better than Ying, so... Like, it's kind of this... this They, they kind of have their own tier list, and I'm just kind of putting it into this one. Where Maldamba might be better than, than Saris, but Saris might be better than Ying, and Ying might be better than Pip, and then Janos comes in, and he might be better than all of them, or he might be worse than all of them. You know? So they have their own tier list, and I'm kind of just pushing into this one, you know? So, in that sense, she's A+. Plus. Like, I probably wouldn't prioritize picking Ceres over a Ruckus or a Bomb King. But, that's... I mean, that's what it is, man. She's A+, plus, I guess. Shaolin is A. He's just a... He's just a damage carry, you know? Again, he, he kind of does the same thing as Lex, where he is a good damage carry. He can fuck shit up real quick. Um... Like, he can, he can do a lot of damage, and he can he is good in the meta. He can shred tanks, but he can also shred carries. Uh, he does 1300 damage after stealth shots, so that basically just one-shots a carry, you know, or a healer. But he also has planted to shred tanks. But, again, you're probably not going to see that much of him. Because there are other picks that are better. You know, like, you don't need to pick the Shaolin because you're going to have a Cassie. Or you don't need to pick the Shaolin because you're going to have a Leon. Just like you don't need to pick the Lex because you have a Cassie or Leon. And it's like, okay, well, if you have the Cassie, but you maybe maybe you also want Shaw, but then you go, oh, well, we kind of need a Blaster, so then you pick the Bo Bomb King or Drogos. So, yes, it's a great pick. It, it does a, He does a shit ton of damage. He has He's good in the meta, where he can shred tanks, and he can kill carries pretty quickly. But you're also not going to pick him that often, you know? Because there are other options that are better. So it's like, it's it's always available, it's always a pick, it's always an option, which means he's A tier, but he's not higher because he's not necessarily a better option than anyone else. Yeah, what up, XX Blaze at 420XX? Is that Pussy Slayer? Pussy Slayer 420XX? Is that the Leon main forehead? Alright, um, Sky, don't, don't play Sky. Snake, uh, Snake is a solid S tier. Uh, again, the healers kind of have their own tier list right now. Uh, as we get into this meta, there's the healers are kind of like sometimes you can have multiple multiple healers. Like you could potentially have a Janos and a Ying, or you could have Janos and a Grover. But they kind of still have their own tier list for now. It's just like Snake is better than Saris, is better than Ying, is better than Pip, is better than Grover as a healer. No, that's that's what it is. That's just how. Well, actually, maybe Grover's better than Pip, but 
it's it's a very simple tier list right now because because of the current balance it's a very simple tier list right now with the healers before you could argue that maybe Saris is as good as Snake. They have their perks and they have their they each have their perks and their their pros and their cons. You know, Saris had better direct healing, and Snake had better AOE healing. And Snake has an ult that pushes everyone away. Saris has an ult that pulls everybody in. You know, so it's it's they they used to be on par with each other, but now you know. It's it's very hard to argue that Snake is not just the best healer when he got a buff when he was already potentially the best healer. Like, I mean, I have no idea why they buffed Snake's heal, but they did. He was arguably, again, the best healer and they buffed him, so I guess he's the best healer. What can you say? <laughs> like, he's just that much better right now than everyone else. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's some potential for Janos. Personally, this is not my official opinion or anything, but I think he could be pretty good, and maybe he has potential to compete. But we'll leave that out for now. Uh, Torvald B plus or B tier. He's, I mean, Torvald's kind of Torvald. Like he doesn't really do that much. Sure, he was played at LAN in a pocket strat, but it wasn't because, like, he didn't do well because Torvald was good, he did well because people didn't know how to deal with it, you know? I mean, what it came down to is, we had D69 try to deal with the Torvald, we had Kanga try to deal with the Torvald and do slightly better, and then we had Cryptic who tried to deal with the Torvald and just said, ah, fuck it, can't be bothered, let's pick the Torvald, you know? That, that's literally what it came down to, it's like, they probably could have beat the Torvald, if they played correctly, like all these teams probably could have beat the Torvald if they played correctly, if they saw it coming, if they had preparation, if they knew what to do against the Torvald, they could have beat the Torvald. But what it came down to is that they kept trying and trying and trying, but they just didn't have enough time in these best of five and best of seven sets. And then Cryptic eventually just said, eh, fuck it, we can't beat it right now, so let's just take it instead. And that's what won them the game, you know? So, he's not that great, he has, he, he's in B tier for a very specific reason, that he's a pocket strat. That's what QG came to land with, they came to land with a pocket strat. Does that make Buck really strong? No. Does that make Torvald really strong? No. Does that make Resonance Ying super strong? No. It's just a pocket strat. So yeah, Torvald's B tier, like, he doesn't do anything, he doesn't excel at anything. It's annoying to deal with, for sure. And we saw that at land that it can be fucking annoying to deal with, especially when played with that kind of pocket strat. But he's really not that good. And he, he even got nerfed now, so he's even worse than he was then. Um, so yeah, I'd say just B tier. There's no real argument there. He's just a pocket strat. Tyra, similar idea, I guess. Tyra has maybe more potential than I'm giving her here. Um, but realistically speaking, Tyra can't kill a tank right now. <laughs> if a Tyra wants to fight a Barrack, then by all means be my guest. Like, I will happily fight a Tyra when I'm playing Barrack. I will happily fight a Fernando, or a Tyra when I'm playing Fernando. I will happily fight a Tyra when I'm playing Makoa. But that's what Tyra is supposed to be good at. Tyra is supposed to be a tank killer. She's supposed to be a shredder. She can do well in certain 1v1s, you know? If, if you're fighting a Cassie, and the Cassie misses her roll shot, then yeah, you can kill her. But, that's because Cassie missed her roll shot. You know? It's like, sure, she has potential, but her potential relies on other people making mistakes. So, I would say she's still just a pocket strat right now, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick her. If I had a very specific reason to, maybe they have a Barrack and a Torvald and a Ruckus standing on point, stacking. Then maybe I go, hmm, should we pick a Bomb King who's going to stand and, and kill the shields and then throw a Grumpy Bomb? Or should we just pick a Tyra and throw the fire on there so they can't stand on the point? Then maybe I go, okay, well maybe Tyra is the better option. Where normally we'd pick Bomb King to deal with it, maybe Tyra has some potential there. But besides that, it's like, I can't see any other reason to pick it. Like, she she can win 1v1s if other people fuck up. 
She can melt tanks if the tanks don't deal with her. But we're talking competitive play here. We're, we're talking a situation where you have five people on a team with communication who can say, Hey look, there's a Tyra. She doesn't have any mobility. Go kill her. It's like, okay, done. What is Tyra going to do about that? She can't run away. She can't run away from a Fernando. She can't outpoke a barrack with a heal. She can't do any of that. So there's just, there's no reason to pick her right now. It's a pocket strat, if anything. Victor, Victor's a solid A tier, I'd say. Um, he's very similar to the Shaolin and Lex. Like he's definitely a good pick. And there's definitely going to be situations. He's actually really, really good on the new map. Like the new maps, uh, whatever it's called, the quarry map. He's actually really fucking good on that map. It's it's kind of interesting because he has. Like, Kinesa's not very good on that map. You might think Kinesa's really good on that map because you see, oh, there's all these big open open line of sights and it's kind of hard to flank because you have to go all the way around and then you have to go up, like you have to go up the ramps. So you're going to see them coming a mile away. But at the end of the day, if you're playing Kinesa, people can just hide in the core, you know, they can just hide around walls. There's so many little walls here and there you can hide and shoulder peek all the time. But Victor, on the other hand, Victor can do the exact same thing as Kinesa, where he can stand there and he can just shred with gunnery. And he can shred, 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 and then they go, okay, well, now I'm low. Just if he's playing Kinesa, I'm low now, I'm not going to peek again. I'm just going to stand behind the wall until I get a heal, or until I heal myself. What Victor can do then, is he can throw a grenade. Something that Kinesa cannot do. And that's what Victor has always been good at, that every time someone tries to heal or a shoulder peek, he just throws a grenade. So, in that sense, Victor's like, excellent on that map. It's incredibly hard to flank him, he has a lot of mobility jumping from roof to roof, uh, he can throw grenades around walls when people are trying to shoulder peek or heal up, but if he's left alone, he will destroy you. Like, he will just stand there and destroy you with gunnery. So, Victor's just, like, on a map like that, he can be so good, but overall, like, he's he's just an okay pick. It's, it's the same old, right? If you leave him alone, he will destroy you and your team. Just like a Shaolin, just like a Lex, right? If you don't deal with it, they will destroy you. But you can deal with them. He is a good damage carry, he is a good pick. But once again, it's like he is a he is a liability, he's a risk. Compared to Cassie and Leon, who have no risk involved at all. Even a bomb king, even a Drogos, they have very little risk. So you're gonna probably see some victor. But you're not going to be seeing Victor early picks or anything. You're going to see Victor last pick when you go, hmm, they have nothing to deal with a Victor this game. Let's pick it up. That's when you're going to be seeing the Victor played. It's the same thing with Shaolin, same thing with Kinesa, same thing with Lex. It's going to be that last pick option of, okay, well, this 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 time we can definitely go with the Victor. This time we can go with the Shaolin. This time we can go with the Kinesa. So, yeah. Victor is solid A tier. He can be picked, but... He's definitely not crucial, and he's not better than other options, but he he does have potential. Willow, I think Willow is A plus tier. Willow is definitely a a good pick. Like she she is it's I don't know how to explain it. She's been a good pick for a long time. She has been available, she has been strong for a while. But no one's really had the reason to play it. No one's had the reason to pick Willow over Bomb King, over Drogos, over anything. But now people actually do, right? Bomb King was nerfed, Drogos was nerfed, Worm Jets wise at least. And now we actually have a reason to play Willow. Overall, I think Willow's like. Like, she definitely has a shit ton of potential. She can do a lot of damage. The main issue I have with her is that. It's actually really hard for her to ult. Like we we had some we tested a little bit, and trying to pull off her ult is actually really fucking difficult. Especially if you're playing against Leon. Like it's so reliant on your team, like going in and pushing really hard so that Willow isn't being focused. But overall, it's like she has such annoying AoE. Like there's so many things that are so annoying about her. Um she has like I don't I don't know how to explain this. Alright, she has this annoying seedling, right? She has the annoying seedling, where you have to juke it, 
and you have to be aware of it. And if you're not aware of it, it's going to blow you up. So it's kind of this zoning potential. You have the right click, which is zoning potential, because you put it in a place and you say, hey, you can't stand there, you know? You can't, you can't stand on point. You can't push through here because you have no healing. But you also have your damage, your left click damage, where you can shoot around walls. You say, okay, well, you can't come out here in the open because there's an anti heal there. But you also can't like hide behind the wall because I can poke you around the wall. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, well, you're going to go even further past the wall so that you're not doing anything. You're completely useless. And you can still throw a Q back there. So it's in incredibly annoying for tanks to deal with because you can't shoulder peek, you can't, can't deal with it. But then on top of that, it's really annoying for carries too. Because the worst thing about her is that every time she shoots you, she does a different amount of damage. The first shot, she's doing like 500, 600 damage. And then suddenly out of nowhere, she does 800 direct hit, you know? So in that sense, like, it's, it's incredibly annoying. She's incredibly annoying for tanks to deal with. She's incredibly annoying for carries to deal with because you, you're always surprised about what she's doing. Because she's always poking you and doing little to no damage, and then suddenly she has a shit ton of damage. So it's it's this really annoying character to deal with. So yeah, I'd say she's A plus tier. Like I would pick her over Bomb King, honestly. Like I would rather be playing Willow than Bomb King. Honestly, in some situations, I'd probably rather play Willow than Drogos. Like, she can just, she can shit on anybody. She can shit on tanks, she can shit on healers. She just for, she's a force that you have to deal with. You have to deal with her eventually. She can't, you can't just let her stand there, you know? It's just like a Drogos with combustible. You can't just let him stand there and loogie you over and over again. You have to deal with the Willow at some point. And when you do, she's gonna shit on you. Alright, Ying, Ying is a solid A tier, like, again, with the healers, they're, they're just have, they have their own tier list. Snake is better than Ceres, Ceres is better than Ying, Ying is better than Pip and Grover. And Pip and Grover, neither of them are really healers, they just have healing. So it's like, I mean, what, what can I really do? She's just, I mean, she's just A tier, you know? She's just worse than Ceres, better than Pip and Grover. That's about it. And I'm sorry to ruin the symmetry, but Jin is B tier. I can't just put him in A tier for the symmetry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> can't do it. Jin is similar to Eevee, where he doesn't really do anything. He just buys time. He just kind of buys time. He just... Yes, he can go and he can counter. Yes, he can go and he can billow. He can run around corners and be obnoxious, but he doesn't kill anything. Especially in competitive play. In a casual, sure, he can find a Androxus, he can find a, a healer and fight them in a 1v1 situation. But that doesn't happen in competitive play. If you're playing on Frog Isle and someone says, oh look, there's a Jin over there, and says, hey, there's a Jin flanking, the team goes, okay, and they all shoot him once, and he's dead. Or if he's a really good Jin, he'll use his Billow, he'll get closer, and then he'll use his counter. And you go, okay, it's a Jin, he has 2k HP, just wait for him to use his cooldowns, then we kill him. Just like a, just like an Eevee, you know? With Eevee Reprieve, she blinks in an ice blocks, and then you kill her. Now she has no cooldowns. With a Eevee Wormhole, she blinks in. And then she blinks out and you go, okay, she did nothing, and now she's out of the fight again. It's just, it's the same thing for bo both of these characters, it's just like, you can just ignore them, you know? And if you choose to not ignore them, then they have to run away. Like, if a Jin comes in behind, behind you, you can say, ah, oh, it's fine, whatever, like, she'll, she'll, the Knesso can just teleport away and then the Jin is use useless. But, you can also just say, okay, well, the, the Jin's behind us, so let's just kill him. Yeah, I don't know, he's just, he's just not good. He can survive a long time, he can be annoying, he can be... 
I don't know, even in like in a casual and a ranked game, he could potentially be pretty good. But once we're talking competitive, he's just, there's just no reason to pick him. Honestly, that's it. There's no reason to play him. You can do everything that you can do on Jin with a Fernando. Or with a Barrack, or with a Nash. So yeah, that's it for this tier list. Um, again, I, I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I'm going to say it again just in case. This is for competitive play, uh, not for casuals and ranked. However, a lot of this will still apply to casuals and ranked. But that's not where the motivation for each tier and each character derives from. Yeah, that's it. That is all, folks.